Welcome. Hydrox 101. So Global Village Construction Set relies pretty much completely on hydraulic power as a way to transfer power. So we use power cubes, which are modular engine units, and using hydraulics, power cubes, and hydraulic components, we can modularize design completely because power is transferred through hoses. So starting with a power cube, we've got an engine, which is right now a standard gasoline engine. The engine is connected to a hydraulic pump through a direct coupler. You're transferring the rotary motion of the engine to rotary motion in a pump, which is basically a, a pump that pumps fluid at very high pressure. And that's how all the power is transferred. The good thing about it is that, so you have this big engine and then a tiny pump, it's literally like this big. And this little, little thing carries, like right now we have the 27 horsepower power cubes. This little thing carries, creates the fluid at very high pressure, like 2,000 to 3,000 PSI, that transfers the power to all the different wheels. This bypasses the need for a transmission because the transmission is done through hydraulics and these hoses are flexible so you can you can attach any kind of a active power component very flexibly instead of using things like transmissions and mechanical shafts so essentially a hose a, you know like a half inch hose can transfer 50 horsepower of power and then you go to a three quarter inch hose that can transfer like 100, 100 horsepower so very tiny conduits transfer a lot of power. It's a very effective way that allows us to now go into absolute modular design. It's plug and play. We use quick couplers where the fluid hoses and all the components are connected by quick couplers that just basically snap in and snap out. So you can you can plug and play like a life-size Lego set. So there are five main components pretty much when we talk about hydraulics. And the main concept is continuity of fluid. If you're pumping this fluid, it has to like a circuit, it's a circuit, it flows from one outlet of the pump and then it returns on the other side. But it's a complete closed circuit and when you design anything here, that's one thing to kind of think about. Uh, you always have to keep the continuity of fluid going and that's kind of a basic design principle. So how do you do that? The main components are valves, cylinders, motors, and then there's two more which is a flow control valve and a cushion valve. And with those five basic five elements plus fittings, we can power all the things that we're talking about right now in the 6 and 60 campaign. So what does a valve do? There's two main types of valves. It basically allows fluid to flow in one direction or another direction. So this example right here is a bidirectional flow control valve. Push it one way, fluid goes out one, one outlet and goes back the other. You push it the other way, it goes out the other outlet and goes back in the other. And the way you feed these is, um, so, so the hoses, basically if, if you have a power cube then the hoses that go into it go in on one side and come out the other. So to draw that, you've got your, so you start with your power cube that has two outlets. So you've got two outlets for the power cube. You go to your valve, your flow control valve, uh, basically, fluid goes in to one side, then it goes out the other side, and you complete the cycle like that. So you can connect anything you want to this, so this will have the two outlets in and out, and you can control, for example, a cylinder. So, so one side of the cylinder, one inlet, and the other inlet of the cylinder, and it goes in and out. So you can control it both ways. If you connect it to a motor instead, if you don't have that, but instead you connect it to a motor, so basically the motor will have two, two outlets. So you've got some motor with a shaft. Um, go in one side, go out the other. If you, if you have, if you go, you can basically reverse the direction of the motor. So you can go forward and backwards. For a cylinder, that means extraction, um, extension and retraction. And you can, you, that valve allows you to go in one direction, one direction, say like that, if you press the valve, say up, and then if you reverse it, then, then you go back this way and forward that way. So you can control the directions. It's, it's pretty easy. Now, there's two types of valves. That's the main thing, like when we design this. Two types of valves. One is a cylinder valve, and there's a unique valve for a motor. You can actually control, you can use the same valve for both, but here's what happens. So 
a cylinder, what's, what does a cylinder valve mean? It means that once you, when you, when you push it, it will stay there. It doesn't let fluid freewheel after you push it to a certain position. That means when you extend the cylinder, it will stay there. It will be very firm staying there. If you use the, a motor valve, you'll be able to push that rod back and, in and out uh, because the fluid can actually flow freely, and that's the difference. The, the freewheeling action that I described is very useful for a motor because if you're going forward, if you locked, if you released the valve and just stopped it, it would come to a dead halt and you'd screech to a halt. So, so that's why you want to use a motor valve for things like tractor or truck. You want to use a motor valve because that means it will keep freewheeling whenever you release it, which is, which is good. And if you want to stop, you can actually pull it the other way and you'll be able to stop. You basically reverse the direction to make it actively stop. Now, that might sound like if you push it one way, then you reverse, it's like, whoa, something's going to give. Well, that's right. Something is going to give. And that is the, the valves typically have a pressure relief. So there's, there's going to be this kind of a knob on the side of a valve. And you adjust it to set it from low to high. Like 3,000 would be the maximum, typically. If you set it to low setting, then when you do something like reverse on a on a vehicle, it'll like bypass the fluid while still stopping, so it won't jerk it jerk you around. It'll be smooth and allow you to stop. So the other component that I mentioned was a flow control valve. If you look at that, so that valve. So instead of this, say you have a flow control valve, it looks like this this kind of a deal with a lever here. And you can push that lever back and forth to control the amount of fluid that comes in. So these are, say, the, there's one inlet in this kind of a valve and two outlets. When you push the lever all the way one way, all the fluid will go out of this one, say, exit one. And if you push it all the way the other way, all the fluid will go out exit two. So for example, if you connect this to the different sides of a micro track, you can, in the middle, you'll have 50-50, so you'll be going forward. If you go all the way to the, to the one side, only that one side will be going forward, and the other one will be just there steady. And if you do it the other way, then, so if you have the, say, you got the, like, the micro truck with two wheels, uh, in the full, like the full to the left position, only this will be going, so basically you'll be able to turn around like this. Uh, so that's that's what it would do. This we can use either this or just uh, just two of these valves for the micro track. If you use this one, that wheel right there is not locked, so it can go forward a little bit because um, let's see, we'll we'll have to see it in practice, but we can experiment using one of these valves or just two of these for each side, because if you use this one, then you actually have reverse on each side, which is which means that you'll be able to like spin in place. You won't be able to spin in place with this kind of valve. For simplicity, we don't need to do this right now. So let's let's work with just these simple ones. And maybe like scratch just that's just for your reference, but let's scratch this one for now. Because we can definitely take two of these. So you've got so now you have a double, you know, two spool valve. Uh, you have once again you've got in and then out coming coming back. And then you have this has got two two outlets here, so this would be to one wheel motor, and this would be to the other wheel motor. Uh, this other side would be to the other wheel motor um, on your tractor, on your micro track. So you can go, you can literally spin in place. So that's how you'd wire that up. So getting to the cylinders, it's things like loader arms. That's where this other third, let's call it the third component, the, the cushion valve is important. Uh, what that allows you to do is when you have a cylinder control valve, if you raise, if, say you're lowering, lowering a heavy loader filled with something. If you, if you lower it and then just stop it, it will just totally come to a, a, an abrupt stop. So that's where you, you use the cushion valve that we showed in the Hydraulics 101 page because that will basically make it go like it's going down fast and then it just kind of slows and, and stops. Otherwise, you'd be like getting bumped up every time you move the loader down. It will like lift it back up, kind of do that thing. So that's Hydraulics 101 in a nutshell.
So now I'll just describe briefly what the things are that you're looking for, like some of the, because in surplus center, anywhere that you look, there's going to be hundreds of types of these valves. And so I want to just tell you what are the main things you need to look for. Critical thing about these, it has to be open center. What does that mean? That means open center means that that fluid goes right through it, through the center, and flows out when it's not activated. Because our hydraulic power cube always pumps fluid. There's other types of pumps that are called like variable displacement pumps, where, yeah, which, which they either pump fluid or not, so they, it's a different mechanism. They, you can actually control how much fluid they're pumping. Here, we've just got one volume of fluid, which is for a 27 horsepower power cube, it's about 14 gallons per minute. For the new 50 horsepower power cube, it's going to be about 28 or 25 to 28, something like that. So for the large power cubes that we use, we need to have 30 gallon per minute valves. If we use the small power cube, there's 20 gallon per minute valves. That's more than enough for the 14 gallons per minute that we have. The basic parameters of the existing 27 horsepower power cubes typically give us about 14 gallons per minute. So one is open center. Two, I just touched on the volume of flow. Typically, if you're using the one power cube, you just need half inch hoses. If, you're, if you've got more than one power cube, you need to use a three quarter inch hose. And the hoses, once again, there's tons of hoses. The hoses will vary by length, by the kind of fitting. Typically, the fittings that we will use, and typically what we want to do on these valves is make, make sure that these are NPT, National Pipe Thread Fittings. That's basically the same as, as pipe fittings in your house, but it's easy to work with. And as opposed to the, there's another type called SAE, which has got O-rings. Some of the, well, whenever we can, let's not use the O-rings because the, the NPT is kind of like more flexible. It's easier to, it's kind of easier to work with in some way in a sense that's easy to design the circuit that way. Because if you have, anytime you have, you're going from N NPT to SAE, you need to have adaption. So because, for example, the quick couplers that we use are all NPT, we would always need an adapter. So, so to use to to s reduce it down to all NPT really works for us because that way we use a finite number of fittings. Otherwise, like the number and different types uh, would just get out of control. There's there's also British pipe thread. There's the O-ring one, and then there's the NPT. So let's wherever possible use NPT unless you have to because it simply doesn't exist. I can tell you that on a the huge wheel motors that we use, those are British pipe thread for some reason. So we just have to go through that, meaning that we get an adapter from surplus center. At best, what this looks like for the NPT fittings is on the inlet, you have either like a one half, so that would be the inlet. At best, it's like one half or three quarter NPT. And the outlet the same on your valve here. And then you just put, so this is a female fitting. Typically I have female fittings. That's, that's a standard. Female is standard on these valves. So here, what that means is you need an NPT male. A hose does that. Well, OK, but here's the trick. So, so part three. So one OC, open center, two NPT, three was the GPM value either like 20 or 30. They're, they typically have, you'll see it, but there's 30 gallon per minute ones. We'll, we'll need those for the big power cube. The 20 will do for the small power cube. So there's NPT. Why we're also doing NPT is that you can actually go to the store and get one from the plumbing store. They're, they're a little different. They're, they're weaker at the store. They're, they're not as strong, but they work for return lines, but for pressure lines, it's not a generally a good idea to get to use this ones from from the plumbing store because they they will break they're like they we have some of them on an old tractor and they haven't broken yet but they can they definitely do crack sometimes the dedicated hydraulic ones that you get at surplus center they look like hex they they're more hexagonal like for example the uh, when you look at the for example the nip it's going to be kind of like hexagonal um, 
and then you got the threaded part here. That's the hole there. Threaded part there. The ones from the store look like the ones that are hydraulic. They're just like straight. You just got thread here, thread there, and you need like a pipe wrench or clamps to hold them to tighten them. Here you have this hex to tighten it down. Next part here is the quick couplers. We want to make all of our components quick coupled such that if we're prototyping these machines, you can take one valve. We're done with, with prototyping the, the micro track. You can put the valve on a different device like the iron worker so we don't have to build up another one because you got to put in all these fittings. There's four fittings you need to put in to make this active to, to get it ready for use. And, and at the minimum, that will in include eight parts eight parts outside of the, the valve itself, eight fittings. So the simplest way we can do it is an, a nip. Um, this would be like, say, one half NPT nip, like nipple. That means the part that goes into the female coupler. And on top of that, you would have the quick connect coupler. It'll, it looks kind of like something like this, this quick connect coupler. And then on the other side, you have a you'd have a nip and then your female coupler. Female looks like that. It's quick coupled. Um, this one, it has this kind of a spring, spring loaded ball that once you take off the coupler, it doesn't leak fluid. So you can have one of these devices just sitting there. You take off the hoses and they're sitting there ready for use without leaking fluid. So here's two parts here. So this quick coupler nip, valve, nip, quick coupler. And then on these fittings, at best, we have once again like half inch NPT. So another nip, put in another nip. All, typically, all these are, are female. So there's another nip coming out here, and then put a quick coupler on that. The convention we like to use is male for um, forgiving, like meaning like forward flow would be like if you have a, an outlet, that would be a male male outlet. The female would be the re receiver. So that's the convention we want to want to do. For the valve, since they both give and receive, they're both like since it's double acting, they're both in and out. Let's just set a convention of of like make the bottom one say like wherever the valve is. Just make the we have to set some convention so they're all the same. Let's just set the convention that the bottom is say female and the top is male. Quick coupler. Male, quick coupler, female, quick coupler. So so the female, that means you have this one here and this one that looks like that here. So that's that pretty much covers the valve. And remember the motor, the, the other part was motor versus cylinder type of valve. When it says motor, it will it will actually tell you it's a motor spool valve, whereas in the description for the cylinder, it will actually tell you it's a cylinder spool valve. So, but this, once you identify the 30 or 20 gallon version, there's only like one type of valve, just select one. If there's many different ones, like different brands, just go to one, like the Prince, is what we typically use the Prince brand of valve. That pretty much covers the, the bi-directional valve. And these valves can be single, double spool, triple, to however many you want. For, like, for example, for the cab, you want them to be individual. On a micro track, it's probably easier to have one that's got two directions. Um, and it depends what device you're working on. You can select single, double. So, I mean, another specification is like, one or two, three valve. Like for example, on a backhoe, we want to have one that's like that's thing's got like six cylinders to control. Motors. Motors next. Any any other questions? Does that make sense? So for motors, it's uh, it's the same kind of deal. Typically, you got a motor. It's got an outlet. You know, you got an outlet inlet. Um, in the simplest fashion, you a motor will. So here we had eight, a minimum of eight components that come to make up a valve. So 
for a single valve. For a motor, you're going to need, like, say it's got, say your motor's got, once again, look for NPT. Well, you're, we're reduced to whatever that motor has. But at best, you'll have some kind of uh, coupler that goes in, and then your quick couplers um, that go out, so do that. Now, some of these motors have a third small hose, which is called the case drain. That one over there, guys. It's a, it's a lubricating outlet that's not at pressure. It kind of lets fluid bypass within the center of the motor. So, but there's another quarter inch. These are typically like half inch fittings. There's a little quarter inch one that's, that's there. So since that's the one that really, that, that bypass this fluid, which convention should we make it? First, which convention should we make Make these ones? Let's say that um, if we're looking at the shaft of the motor, let's just do this here. This is going to be, left is going to be male, right is going to be, right is going to be female. Let's just do that. There's, we got to just select something so that it's uniform everywhere. Now, what do we select for the gender of the out the outlet? What is that going to be then? By our convention, is it male or female? Most of them are male, like on that motor over there. Mm -hmm. A male thing. Male is good because it's it's an emitting, it's not receiving, it's it's giving fluid. So let's call that male. So that this will be a male quick coupler. So a quarter inch. So a quarter inch male coupler, male quick coupler. And typically all these ones, the quick couplers, there's actually two types. Mo uh, most of them that we'll use are going to be 12. So all the outlets from the valves, we can do 12 out. Like, for example, if we're running cylinders, do 12. So that's, that's another item here. For cylinders, do the there do the small ones, which are the 12 GPM gallon per minute, half inch, quick couplers. The inlets and outlets typically we want to make them larger because that's we can stack these valves up. We can put like the next valve next to it. So um, let's make these three quarter fittings uh, whenever we can. Well, on a micro track you don't need three quarter. So we just have to make decisions. Like on, you definitely don't need three quarter on a micro track, and and the price difference, like the the half inch couplers, are about fifteen bucks. The the thirty gallon per minute coupler, quick couplers are thirty bucks about. So there's a little price difference. But if we're using the good thing actually about the the fittings though, the quick couplers is that both of them, the thirty and fifteen, can plug into each other. So you can interchange them. For the motors, hydraulic motors, what I'll say is half inch ones for the small for the small motor small applications like the micro track, but we really need to go to three quarter. If you're talking about the bulldozer, you definitely need three quarter. If, like for example, if you've got four wheels and and say thirty gallons per minute, uh, if we have a fifty horsepower power cube, right now the thirty gallons divided by four is only eight. So actually the small ones would do for now. But if we have more power in the future, we're going to need more. Uh, for, in the meantime, we, we can actually just do one half. We can do one half for now. Since we don't have, like, the biggest power cubes we have is our, our 50. And if we go, like, if we want to put four power cubes on a bulldozer, that's 100, about 100 horse. But still, each one is, uh, you, can, you can use the smaller coupler, the 12 gallon per minute for each. Yeah. Um, I noticed on surplus center that the that hydraulic motors, mm -hmm. the size of them um, is measured in uh, cubic inches. Correct. Yeah. Uh, what is what is that? Uh, cubic inch refers to how much basically the size, like how much how much area, like the fluid pushes against, like whatever the mechanism inside is. Okay. So the larger the the size there, then the more force it can generate. The more torque necessarily, or yeah, typically, okay. and there's also different kinds of motors. There's like Giroler, Giroder, like all these different yeah, ones. Yeah. And then there's simple simple gear motors. Mm -hmm. So there's various types and the amount of torque they give out depends on what kind of mechanism they have inside. They're quite quite intricate. Mm -hmm. 
when we're going to do build these, because we're going to build these in the future, we're going to start with simple gear type pumps and motors. And at that point, we'll be able to make a huge hydraulic motor, and we will not need our gear down that we're building right now. But right now, those huge hydraulic motors are going to be like $5,000 each, so we can't afford it. We have to wait for about a year, and we'll build them for about $300 in parts. So it's a better deal. Yeah. <laughs> so that's about that's motors. Now, the cushion valve, let's talk a little bit about the cushion valve. If you've got, so if you're designing like the real, real case of cylinders, on the back row you've got, say, individual cylinders. On the, on, the, on the loader, you've got one valve acting on two cylinders. So you're, you're going to, let's say you've got the valve, you go into to the two cylinders, you go out, then you have to T it out. So you're going to have a T, and you're going to go to one cylinder on one side, one cylinder on the other. And then from the other outlet, you're going to tee out to the other side of the cylinder. So say that's your cylinder here. Basically, you're going to have to do that. So your other cylinder here. So you have to basically consider consider the tees teeing out. That's all it really is for the loader arms, for example. Now, for the loader arms, we, we need to put in the cushion valve in this within this circuit. So where do we put it? So now for the let's talk about the cushion valve. So it's like a square square looking thing. It's got basically two inlets on one side and two outlets. Basically, the way it works. Um, so so for this cushion valve, what happens? Is typically, if you've got fluid going in here, it continues, allows it to go back out there, then it returns here and like that. If you get a sudden shock of pressure, there's so there's your pressure setting on this on this cushion valve. If it gets the sudden shock of high pressure, meaning that you drop the loader and it stops, what it will do is it will allow this to bypass. Like, say you go in. Like say the, the loader is here, you dropped it, you locked it in, what it will do is it will allow this, so typically the, say the fluid goes like that typically, under that shock condition what it will allow is there's a spring inside there and it will allow fluid to cycle like that so it can continue falling down a little without getting locked right there. That's basically how it works. To to put it into how do we put it into this circuit here? Uh, we got to put it between the cylinders and the valve. Well, just put it in like right there. So basically, these two outlets here and there. That's what you need to do. You can look at the existing life track to see where the, to, to identify those those cushion valves and basically kind of replicate what's going on there. And concept is here like when you do the select your components you have to look at the geometry like where you are where is the valve pointing to how is it oriented so you might need to have elbows like instead of this nip here you might need a nip elbow because there'll be like real geometrical considerations at all times otherwise you get this this uh, crow's nest of hoses everywhere which is presently the status of the existing tractor. <laughs> we like to, to do it right. That's why we're, when we're moving to the cab, we'll try to organize it so it's really well organized. And, and the only, like for example, for the cab, you, you just have a plug in into the cab, and then an exit, and then a case drain. And then everything is like all the levers are inside, and there's outlets for the arms, for the motors from that. Um, from that cab. But basically we try to organize it as well as we can. We want to eventually go to metal tubing. I don't know if we're going to have time right now, like metal tubing that you just plug into that and they're fixed so you don't have to worry about the hoses rubbing. Because basically what happens if the hoses rub, anytime you activate them they kind of stiffen up and like kind of punch. So so if they're rubbing against each other they're they're going to break very quickly if you don't have them properly aligned and arranged. 
So that is, I mean, we go through a lot of hoses here because we haven't really fixed that issue of mounting them in a proper way. That's perhaps one of the big challenges of, of doing this is that you have to mount it, have, have to actually put a lot of attention to how, you, how you're going to mount it. Yeah, and then eventually go to the metal tubing. Now, if we have energy and time enough to, to examine how the metal tubing would be routed, like especially in the backhoe. Like the backhoe, it's got long booms and things. You might start with that as putting in metal hoses there that are, once again, quick coupled so you can plug into them only at the joints, but everywhere else they're stiff. The, the moving joints, you'll have a flexible piece, and everywhere else you'll have metal. But it's basically it. So did we cover all those... Um, Let's see the five components. So we've got cylinders, motors, you got the valve, you got the cushion valve, and we're gonna forget about the fifth component, which is the flow control valve, which which controls the amount of fluid to each exit. Uh, we'll forget about it. So that's that's basically it. I think that's you know for the um, this little instruction on hydraulics 101. That's that's about it for now. Any any questions or okay, that's it. Cut.